Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the best show of the best shows, where we talk about everything from comic books to even social commentary. This is episode number 13 of For Canon's Sake. So whether you're a normie, a wannabe expert, or a tryhard, get in there. And now, for your host, Mr. Eric July. Hello, everybody. We are back with another episode of For Canon's Sake. See? See, I said, I said that I was going to be putting out episodes a lot earlier and a lot more frequently than what I have been in the past. I know I've been very, very, very bad on this as of late. Um, I mean, we're talking about spending months in between, but we're no longer doing that. I'm still not sure on the exact schedule that I'd like to be. I don't want to commit to one yet simply because you already know how that works. (laughs) Commit to it and I can't follow through. I don't want to let you guys down, man. We don't want to do that. We don't want to let you guys down. But be sure that you hit me up on all of my other forms of social media at Eric D. July on Twitter. You can support the show at patreon.com slash Eric D. July. And of course, you can visit Eric D. July dot com for more information. This podcast for Canon's sake, you can go to for Canon's sake dot com. But you, of course, can listen to this everywhere, not just my website, but we're live on Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts, you name it, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you pretty much get your podcast from you can go listen to the show and this show is of course brought to you by daydreamer customs now what is daydreamer customs talked about this last show this is not a paid advertisement this is actually actually excuse me lady ripper shop all sorts of cool things over there get something for your lady talking jewelry boxes all handcrafted by way of lady ripper jewelry (laughs) not just jewelry boxes jewelries jewelry that is um you name it we got picture frames all sorts of things that are there on the site visit uh daydreamercustoms.com for more information tell her i sent you now today's topic is something that you've probably seen me discuss before but that's the point of the podcast is to just go a little more in depth now for those that aren't creators And maybe some guys that are creators may disagree with me on this. But me personally, it's a little different to do something in long form that's like a podcast or what have you in a video. Right. Just a standalone video. I at least treat my YouTube videos not necessarily in content, but just how I present it is a little different than what I would my show like this. Though we have the camera going, of course, it's like not there. Right. The camera's going because this is going to be live on YouTube. But. It is what it is. Just like it's not there. And I'm kind of just free balling everything. <laughs> For lack of better terms, free balling everything. And I get to expand upon my positions on things that may get lost in the sauce. If you're listening on my other, like again, YouTube, Facebook video, whatever you're listening to me or you're, you're seeing my videos and, and just me talking about it, I just can't go in depth uh, in, in a lot. But the release of Charlie's Angels, the new Charlie Charlie's Angels. There's been some talk yet again. It keeps getting brought up anytime there is a female led seems to be a, among the action sort of film and even TV. Now, the reason why I feel obligated to talk about it more so is centered around the fact that we're talking comic books, right? Comic books cross right over into this. And in fact, when we went through some of the director of the new um, Charlie's Angels, Elizabeth Banks, and we went through some of her comments and some of her comments. I don't want to dive too deep into that, but it is important that you go maybe watch my video, but go look up some of the things that she had to say centering around the release of the film, saying that she believed that, you know, you got to go get out there, support it, buy tickets, because if not, you're perpetuating this sort of stereotype. If it doesn't see success, if it doesn't make money. You're sort of perpetuating a stereotype that I believe actually does exist for uh, for better, for worse. But it does exist. It is a thing that people believe to be true. And that is that men have a problem or an issue going out and supporting and going out and watching. Female fronted action films. And. My problem with some of what she said was centered around just look, man. We're women. We have women supporters. We are stars. And this is this sort of social agenda this that I have. 
has to be funneled through the movie. And that's more important than the content. That's more important than making you interested in what it is that I'm talking about or, or the film itself. Excuse me. And when you do that, it's always going to be a recipe for a disaster. Always. It's always going to be a recipe for the disaster because you have prioritized that and you have tried to shame people into supporting your film or TV show or whatever it is when you're just like, I'm a woman. And then the immediate, I mean, the movie's not even out. We just get, or it just comes out first week and we're already perpetuating this nonsensical idea that the reason that it was not supported is because it's a females led and fronted film. Now, when it came to, and she did, she does mention this when it comes to movies like Wonder Woman, even Captain Marvel, which I didn't personally like, and I've already done too many videos on this and how I think the success of that movie is more so attributed to, has nothing to do with the character and just more so the genius marketing and the genius placement with it being right between Endgame and Infinity War. So that's why I did the numbers that it did because they're promoting it as if you got to see this movie. You got to know what's going to happen. This character is the most powerful going, going to be the most powerful. Literally that's what Kevin Feige said. Most powerful character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But that's neither here nor there. She brings those up. The Wonder Woman's of the world says, the, the, well, they set up larger films, right? Like the Justice League and like Avengers and, um, that's why people wanted to go see it, right? That it, it had, and that's sort of what along the lines of what I said. But <clears throat> that does not necessarily mean that it's going to see success. Just because you have a comic book movie, even if it if it's in a in a like a larger universe, does not mean that it's going to be supported. Does not mean that it's going to be good or anything. I mean, there's a lot of people that, and I think they rag on it too much. Uh, that, that has that they have some big gripes. With the DC, you know, cinematic universe, if you will. So it is what it is. It doesn't mean that you're going to get supported. But the difference between Wonder Woman and it had, and what's whatever Charlie's Angels is doing it has little to do with the fact that it's a comic book movie. It has little to do with the fact that it's a comic book movie. It has everything to do with the simple fact that. Yes, we get it. Wonder Woman, most notable female superhero. But they didn't insult men in the process. And even though it was, you knew it was Wonder Woman, right? And even Wonder Woman has always been this sort of beacon. It's always been this sort of representative of, of, of even, I mean, since really she's been created, that sort of prominent representation if you will even though we know that they didn't have to lecture us about it they didn't have to tell us about it and they certainly Gal Gadot was not on the campaign trail shaming men into seeing it or out of seeing it which it does tend to have the opposite effect none of that really went down this was more of a case of okay Wonder Woman Gal Gadot let's check it out Gal Gadot I, I think I pronounced her name wrong sorry about that we'll just call her Gal Gal, movie Wonder Woman, okay. Convince us that this is Wonder Woman. Okay, let's go check it out. Movie was a success in that term. A lot of people liked it. I loved it. I absolutely loved that movie. And Wonder Woman is one of my favorite characters, and she convinced me that she was Wonder Woman. He did. She convinced me that she was Wonder Woman. She isn't easy to do, but she did. I'm okay with that. Now, I have a bias because I was I'm more inclined to see it because of it. You know, it's a. It's a comic book movie, right? Of course, saw Captain Marvel as well. It's a comic book movie. So not just for the audience so I can break it down, but this is a, these are things that interest me. So even if I know from a blockbuster standpoint or from a, let's say, pop standpoint, a lot of people might not be into it. I would still go see it, right? Now, Charlie's Angels is a little different because, yes, I've seen the movie, you know, remember seeing Lucy Liu and and, and the gang with the Charlie's Angels movie. Remember, remember checking that out? But 
this isn't some franchise that I'm like really, really into. I'm sure that they have a hardcore following of people that maybe are like I am and others are with comic books. But I will say, and I think we all can agree, certainly in this day and age, it's not nearly as prominent as it is with maybe comic books. So people aren't as, don't, don't have as much incentive to go watch it, to go check it out, to go see it. They don't. But it is a recognizable name, nonetheless, so it is treated as this reboot. And I know a lot of people are like, we didn't ask for this reboot. And I'm like, eh, I mean, if it's good, a lot of people, you don't ask for anything. But a lot of people will, will accept it as long as it's good, <laughs> you know. But the problem is, is that a lot of people weren't convinced by way of the marketing that this was something that they should be interested in. And then you have Elizabeth, director, going out of her way to tell you that, hey, we did this for women. Okay, it's not even for me. Fine. Well, why would I go check that out? Why would I go see that? You know, you know, you know, you know that if you want to see the numbers, you have to appeal to just a, a larger demographic. You have to. Men and women have to go watch your movie. Now, yes, it can be a slight majority one way or the other, but men and the women, if you want to want it to be like blockbuster in a sense, both genders have to go check it out. They have to go check it out. But in this case, you made a mistake. And this is a mistake that I'm seeing repeated even in the comic book realm where people are prioritizing social preferences, show social agendas, and trying to use franchises to put that out there. And they think that it's their responsibility as Hollywood stars, and it's their responsibility as the people that are on screen to put that out there for you to check out. They think that it's their responsibility to do so. And they have no issue hijacking and ruining now, I'm not saying that that's what happened with Charles Angel. They have no problem doing that. Elizabeth told you, not that she would ruin it, but she told you what her personal preference and agenda is. Why would men go see that movie? You're insulting them out of sin. Not only are you shaming them if they don't see it, but you're not even attempting to appeal and the argument can be made that the whole sex appeal element, I mean, yes, men are dogs like that, and unfortunately a lot of them are into that. Not just the sex appeal element, but men have no issue going to see hot chicks beat people up. They have no issue seeing that. That was sort of what, that was the whole Charlie's Angels deal anyway. They use, they use their you know, a, a, a attraction to get over anyway. And the the thing about the one that said, was it, 90s, can't remember if it was early 2000s or 90s, the one with Lucy Liu and was Drew Barrymore was in it that was in it as well? The difference between that is that back then they didn't shy away from that. This one is like, well, we don't want to go that route. Now, fine, I get it. You don't want to go that route. That's fine. On top of that, you're in, you know, you got your director shaming men and not seeing it. And it looks terrible. It looks, it looks absolutely terrible. And I want to be clear, right? I don't know if, if it's terrible. I haven't seen it. This is why I haven't said that it was garbage. I have not seen it. Y'all know I don't do that. And I'm not even going to pretend like I'm a big Charlie's Angels guy. I'm not even going to pretend like I had like, oh, it was her comments that made me not want to see it. No, it really wasn't. I know that that made that was a deal breaker for a lot of other people. But with me, I like action movies. I like action movies. I'm not a Bond guy. I'm not a whatever 007, whatever it is. I don't even know what they call it these days. I'm not big into that. But I've seen a couple of them in theaters. Why? Because they looked intriguing to me, even though that is not. I'm a, no, I'm a normie when it comes to that. I am a complete normie. It's like if Star Wars, y'all know I'm not a Star Wars guy, though we've been playing, um, you know, on my live on stream, we've been playing Jedi Fallen Order, but I'm not a Star Wars guy. I don't know a whole lot about the movies. I have no, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to go see it. But if something did, like, w was to convince me to go see it, I go see it. I have no problem seeing it. I have no problem admitting I'm a normie. So it's not that I wouldn't see it. If it looked like a cool action film, and that's what they have to do is convince me. If it looked like a cool action film, I, and that, those are the main movies that I watch. It's obvious because I'm a comic book guy. Those are the main type of movies that I like to watch. 
action films. Doesn't matter if it's female fronted, not female fronted, male, doesn't matter, mix of both. I don't care, black, white, doesn't matter. I like to see that if it looked intriguing to me, I would have went to go see it. I would have reviewed it for you guys too. But when you got this whole, I mean, I, it looks terrible. I'm just going to be completely honest. I'm not at all convinced. And it has little to do with sex, that sex bill as I've aged. That that doesn't interest me. <laughs> you know what I mean? As much as, as anything else. Um, but if it looked good, if it looked solid, and it didn't look like it looked forced, right? And if it didn't look forced, I would have went to go check it out. But there we have it. It's forced. I don't know what to say. I mean, it, 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 it's forced. So what did they expect to happen? And then I'm looking on Twitter and I see that the guy who created another debacle in 2016 Ghostbusters is defending Elizabeth and her comments because people are like, I remember he was responding to a comment of somebody that was along saying something along the lines like, look, dude, why are you mansplaining? You're mansplaining. He said that's the exact term that he used. I'm not making it up. That's the exact that the director of Ghostbusters 2016, that's exactly what he said. Why are you mansplaining? He used the term, at least. Paraphrasing it. But he did use the actual term mansplaining. And he said, well, mo movies with female front, it are, are agenda movies with uh, just men are, are just me movies. Like, you see, like, movies have been out, what, a week? And that's they're already saying that. If a week. I don't know if it's been a full week yet. But... <laughs> That's the problem, man. Like, why do they go there immediately? They go there immediately. Like, you have problems with this, no matter if you have legitimate criticisms or not. They sort of make up these narratives and they make up these these sort of uh, like nonsensical talking points. And then said talking point, they say. You don't like women you have a problem with women or you think it's this because women it's like they're trying to suggest that you have an issue with women more specifically you have an issue with women being in movies in this case action movies i'm gonna be completely honest i have seen people that have that position i've talked about this i don't think however it's significant enough to try to pin that on everybody that maybe likes or dislikes something or more so in this case, dislikes a movie with, let's say, female leads. Strong female leads. There's not that many people that I can point to that have that position. Right. I don't know a lot of people that have that, but I've seen comments and I've talked about there is a sector of anti SJWs that adopt those same positions in which they see something and get freaked out. I've had to deal with this. With um, me and my breakdown of Batwoman, I've had to deal with that. I've had to deal with it. You know, I'm dealing with the same thing, you know, where people suggest that, okay, I've, I'm an, I've been, I've been called an SJW, right? There's, there's people out there that are deranged and out of their complete minds in that regards. And maybe, yes, they'll see a female-led feminine. They say, oh, well, this is social justice. Like, I get that. But I don't think that's a large representation of, of individuals that may take issue with, let's say, um, you know, Captain Marvel or may take issue with even what's going on with Charlie's Angels. That's not the case. A lot of people have legitimate arguments. I have legitimate arguments and I'm not even saying that everybody adopts my position. Though I've talked about it and the issues that I have with this list to do with the fact that she's a woman and more to do with the fact that there's a lot of criminal stuff that popped off with this movie. With the characters in it. Talked about Monica Rambeau. Talked about Marvel. You know where I'm at with it. That's my position. That is my position. My position has nothing to do with the fact that me, I don't like something because it has a female lead. That's something that they need to, they got to make that true. And and like I said, yes, there may be individuals that do, but I just don't think that that's a, that's a legitimate like representation of the individuals that may be in opposition to that movie. It's not a significant population of people that, that, that have that position where they just freak out. But they conjure up these false narratives because they need it to be true. Instead of accepting your own failures, instead of accepting the fact that maybe from a marketing standpoint, you messed up. Maybe you should do, think less about, OK, 
I'm making this for women and just make a, a good movie that will then be intriguing to people of both genders. Maybe you should do that. Just adults. Maybe you should do that. Instead of having that approach, the first sign of failure, first sign of criticism, man, definitely if you're a man, you have something, you have an issue with women in action movies. It's like, dude, what? All of the movies that have come out that have female front fronted, I mean, just even action movies. I mean, if you consider the comic book movies action movies, I mean, Wonder Woman's of the world. Crossing over into more so anime with Lita. These are recent years. Resident Evil, I was a big fan because Resident Evil is one of my favorite games, but my favorite game franchise, if you will. But, you know, it's it's not like they aren't out there. And it's not like they're not going to be supported if they're good, if they're solid. Kill Bill. Come on, man. Give it Electra. I think like Electra as as not. It might it might not have been that well done, but dude, man, like there's it, it, just don't insult me, man. That's it. That, that, is that difficult to do? You at least incentive. I might say it, it's going to be bad, or I'm not say it's going to be bad. I might say that it is bad after I've watched it. But it ain't going to be because it's a female lead. That's not the case. A lot of people don't have that position, but they need that to be the position. They need that to be true. So they make stuff up. That's what they do, y'all. They make stuff up because they need it to be true. Their entire non-argument rests upon this nonsensical notion that there's something wrong with you, not something wrong with them. They can't accept responsibility. They can't accept that it's an idiotic scheme, right? To try to simply insult men, shame them into watching your film. That's not smart. And speaking of men action movies, the thing with men action movies is that they just are action movies. Most of them aren't just. We're men, right? We're men and we're better. If you don't, you can't watch this if you're a woman. This is for all the men. Like, no, they don't really do. They don't do that. There's not a whole lot of movies that act. Think about it. There's not a whole lot of action movies that exist like that. They just are. Directors going around saying, well, I made this for, for, for the men. This is the most macho. Mo like, nobody does that. And even if they did, women would probably go see it. Because women don't have as much an issue like that with, with, with uh, you know, definitely cut up actors. That they feel acute. They don't. <laughs> so they'll, they'll go watch that. But that's the thing. Men aren't even saying that. At least I'm not. And I know a lot of people that support me aren't saying. We're not saying that there's a problem with women acknowledging their femininity. I've said that and I've commended movies that do that. Be a woman. That's fine. In fact, that gives you. A different dynamic in comparison to what the you know what may be a male look because it's it's not the same it's not so there's a different dynamic than in comparison to maybe the male lit in terms of the narratives and the different ways you can go with your with your storyline use that to your advantage man and if it's good if it looks good then watch it it's not that men have an issue with with females. That's not the case, dude. But they need that to be true. They need it to be true because if it's true, then they could put out whatever sack of garbage and fall back on this idea that there's something wrong with the audience. Not their product. Arrogance. What else do we call that? So can we stop? Can we please stop with that idea that men have an issue to a significant degree of men, at least 
have an issue with female fronted or female led films, action film. They don't. Men tend to be the ones that watch the action films. Be stoked for the action films. It's not like, I don't know, traditional romance movies or what have you. So you should already have their attention and just being in the genre. In order for men to not see an action movie, you have had to go out of your way for it to not attract men. You had to go out of your way to do that. There was something you did. You had to go out of your way. Not to say that every action movie is going to be a success. But come on, man. This isn't something that is difficult to understand. But what is happening is a lot of people get their social agendas and their warped reality, maybe from, I don't know, social media. And they think that, well, all the people that retweeted, more people retweet Elizabeth Banks than went and saw that movie. And the things she had to say. Goes back to the notion that I don't think that and this is why they hijack uh, cultures and uh, uh, subcultures and fandoms. This is why a lot of people that are advocates of social justice feel like they have to use those characters because they can't create their own because even SJWs don't seem to support this work. Not unless it has a brand name that didn't grow based on social justice. Or equality. You know what I'm saying? It's like. You got to go. Out of, I just I don't know. You got to go out of your way. You have to go out of your way. You got to go out of, out of your way to make men not want to see your movie. But it seems in this case, Charlie's Angels, I don't think women wanted to see it either. Maybe the ones that tweeting and, and yes, Queen Slay. Seems like they didn't even go to the theaters either. Queen Slay. Yes. I mean, you if you was going to appeal to that demographic, you would have had to get nearly all the women to watch it. And you clearly couldn't convince even them, even if you had a slight majority. Let's say if there was an audience of 70 percent, 70 to 80 percent women, 30 to 20 math, hopefully is right. I don't want to see no comments if it was wrong of men. you would have had to have had a high number of women in order for that to be sustainable to ensure success. And not every movie is going to make a billion dollars, but you know, a lot of people are going, they're saying that it's a flop. I can't say that because I, for one, I haven't seen it and think it's just a little too early, too early to, to say, but you have to go out of the, the point of marketing, dude. And the point of, like, it should not like, I don't understand where these actors and actresses get so cocky, right? And directors and everybody that are, that are a part of these projects. I just don't understand how they get so, so, so cocky. So cocky to the point to where they think that them wanting people to see it is just enough. And their personal social preference is enough. And I think this is where Twitter has gotten a lot of people confused as far as how where people are on a lot of positions regarding social approaches and preferences. I just don't think y'all it, it may seem that way with all the retweets and the blue check marks and stuff. But. I mean, is it really? But it's cockiness, man. Like you've got to be special kind of cocky to be like, yeah, man, like y'all going to go see this movie. So I'm just going to say whatever. It should be the easiest thing to stick stick to a script. Well, she's talking to like the uh, Australia Sun or something like that. It was Elizabeth Banks that comes like the basic thing should be all right. If you're a part of this project, just don't say done stupid before it's released or w- during the week that it's released or even before it's about to be released. Just don't say nothing dumb. That should be the bare basic minimum. Even if I'm a part of a movie, right? Even if I'm a part of a movie in terms of. Um, like, I want a lot of people to see it, and it's not about my personal social preferences, like my social approach. Like, it's not like a documentary or something like that. Say if I ended up playing a, a, a acting acting role or even a voice acting role in, like, some sort of 
animated comic book film, right? Doing the lead up, the marketing, if it's going to be released in, in, in theaters, the least I can do is not say something stupid. Doesn't matter what I said in the past on a campaign trail. You ask basic questions, stick to it. Easy. That should be a basic thing. Somebody ask you about try to make this political. Nah, I ain't even going there. That should be easy. That's the easiest thing to do. Easy. But people are getting so arrogant these days. Of, yeah, man, I'm an activist. It's about my social preference. You ask me a question. You ain't got to ask me. You ain't got to provoke me. I'm going to go out of my way to say that I'm hijacking a character or I'm using this as a means to put forth my social preference and agenda. Like, dude, what? And then have the nerve to get upset or confused better, better yet that people that you just insulted or even offended in that, in that sense, using that as a, as a literal term, not just like pearl clutch and faint couch. Oh, no, 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 not that. Like you went out of your way to say, screw these people, right? You're like, oh, I'm making a movie. And you just get out there and you're like, ah, screw Trump supporters like the week before it releases. Like, come on, dude. Like, what are you doing? Oh, vice versa. Oh, like the other side. Like, you know, I screw Obama, right? Man, who cares? Like, dude, man, like this start to like you can do that anytime during the after after the release. Like after it's out of theaters or after, you know, you, it's, it's been made as most money as it's good. You could do that long after that. Why in the world would you do it? Like this is basic marketing, bro. What are you doing? And then had a nerd to be act, acting like you confused at the fact that this is what happened. So look, dude, you get what you deserve in the, in the, in the words of with Arthur Fleck, man. Like, you get what you deserve. <laughs> What's wrong with these people? But let me segue to this. So we've been playing a lot of games. This is the other thing that I want to talk about for the show. I'm not going to spend all the time in the world. Um, But we've been playing a lot of Star Wars, right? We've been playing a lot of Star Wars. Fallen Order. We've been having a blast. Young Group of Five Nine. You can go check out. The, that's the channel name at YouTube. YouTube.com slash Young Group of Five Nine. Go check that out. And we've been playing some uh, get, uh, gameplay or live gameplay. I have not played this game offline at all. I haven't even touched it offline. All we do is play this on stream. I've been having a blast. And it got me thinking about, not, you know, I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer at heart. This is why I was interested in the game, even though I'm not. Isn't that funny? I was just talking about this. I did not even plan for this to be a perfect example of what I was saying in the previous segment, right? I'm not a Star Wars guy. I bought a Star Wars game. Why? Because it looked interesting. And I'm an action adventure guy. This is an action adventure game. So I bought it. Even though I'm not a Star Wars guy. <laughs> anyway. We've talked about on stream, gaming streams. I talked about what would be my dream game. And I want to tell you my dream game. This is my dream video game. So. I love DC Universe. Why? Because it's comic book based in DC. It has a lot of replayability. They're still building upon the game years after this. It seems like it's been, what, a decade? Daybreak is still working on that game, coming out with these different chapters and stuff. I love it. The idea that I created my own superhero. And I get to go around with even my other bros, link up. Complete missions. I absolutely love it. But that's standard for, an, you know, MMO, right? But this is in a comic book realm. So I love it. DC Comics specifically. What? Another, well, hold on. Before I go there. Another game that I had a lot of fun playing 
Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1 and 2. Similar concept, right? Dragon Ball franchise. I love it. Franchise I have a lot of fun with. I've grown up on it. Played a lot of video games. Budokai, all of that stuff. Used to play all that. Yes. But Xenoverse, you can create your own guy. With his own little race. That's part of the Dragon Ball universe. Similar concept. But it's just not nearly as expansive. As DC Universe. So the perfect game to me. Would be a mix of those two. What and what I what do I mean by that? I mean that give me the just expansive open world element of, of of DC universe with the fight mechanics of let's say a Xenoverse or even some of the other what like um <laughs> all those fighting games start to start to seem alike with the jump whatever and dragon ball fighters and all of that stuff well dragon ball fighters is different it's not really the same but you get the element of xenoverse right that could that could be easily done in a comic book the only thing comic book setting the only problem with it the only problem is that you'd have to balance it and how do you do that with the powers all characters can't fly and stuff like that that would be the uphill battle to figure that out and try to balance it but that would be so much fun to me. And I would play that game on stream. I would probably quit all my other adventures and uh, become a full-time streamer. I'd become a full-time streamer, dude. And I'd play that game to death. I think a lot of other people would. If it was in a Marvel, think about it. Marvel DC theme with the fight mechanics. And it doesn't have to be exactly like Xenoverse, but you get it. Oh, it, it, it Xenoverse, it, it really captures the essence of People with powers fighting each other. It captures it very well. Give me those sorts of fight fight mechanics with a DC or Marvel theme. But the theme, not like the Avengers stuff that's coming out. I'm talking about let me create my own thing. I'm all about me. I want to create a guy that looks like what I want him to look like. Give me some options in terms of powers. Let me mix that up. But I, I don't want, you know, with DC Universe, it's a typical RPG, do a move, let it power back up, do the move again, stuff like that. Like, that, that's more so what it is. But I want to be like, I want a game where if I punch you, you fly across the screen type stuff. And it feels like I'm doing something to you, right? And you can even have the same element with DC with the villains versus the heroes and all of that stuff, the factions and all that. You build your only like that will be a, the fact that that hasn't been done yet makes absolutely no sense. Xenoverse. The problem with Xenoverse is just too limited, man. Like you could fly through that story mode and then do the little side, little parallel quest. And then you're like, you're done with the game. There's nothing else to do. And then it's like it's not like it's an actual the little ring, you know, three V three or whatever. It's not like it's ranked. It's not like it's like it, it, it feels like, you know, it's something on the line or anything like that. And even the parallel quests aren't really like fun missions. Whereas the, you know, DC, they get pretty deep with some of the chapters. You're going, oh, I'm going to go here. I got to go over there, fly over there, do this, do this. Imagine having an element of that. And the reason why that was on my mind because I was playing some Star Wars. And that's just gaming. And we, we, t- we talked about this. Every time I game, I talk about that. Now I have on record what my favorite game is. What will be my favorite game? What would be the perfect game? The game that I follow. Let me know what you guys think. Now, usually today I would give you my pull list, but I'm not giving you that because it's actually I shot this before I went to the comic book shop. So sorry. Uh, but next episode, we will for sure give you my it's going to come out this week and I'm going to give you my my thoughts on that. I give you my pull list. I have a lot of stuff in the comic book realm that I would love to talk to you guys about and do some podcasting on. Of course, Keep it locked. EricDigiLive.com, ForCanonSake.com. That's going to do it for today's episode of For Canon's Sake with Eric July. Be sure to keep it locked for the best mix of comics and political commentary you'll ever hear. And I mean ever hear. To get caught up or to contact the show, be sure to visit ForCanonSake.com.